going to go in and pick up the bodies. Because you can allow 10 million people to be wandering around the countryside ransacking homes. And so what will happen to your debt? I really don't know. All I know is the rules will be different. There will be a military, a police state. And your debt is kind of irrelevant. In a police state, everything is different. I, I, I can't see through that. I don't know. But probably it won't be a big deal because there will be no banks to come collect. Your educational debt will be... I can't even imagine educational debt ever even being an issue again. If you owe $50,000 and the banks crash, I don't think you'll ever deal with it again. But if you have a home debt and others like that, surely something will happen to the... The banks eventually may try to recover, but in Loma Linda last week, we had a donor just called us and said his, his father just sold his home on Wednesday. He deposited the money at a bank in Loma Linda on Wednesday, and on Friday, the bank closed. He lost the entire home. He said it was a third of his lifetime savings. And all I can say is that's going to happen more and more often. Because he didn't tell me that until after. He asked me a lot of questions about the economy. And then he told me, and I said, it's going to happen more and more and more in a rapidly accelerating thing where, where it's going to become very difficult to manage money. What, I, what I'm trying to say is, right now, we still have some opportunities that won't be here in six months. I'm not a prophet. All I can do is share the information I know. I know that some people don't like to hear this, and some people say this. In fact, an administrator at a local university told me just a few weeks ago, David, the economy of the United States is the best it's ever been since 1980. <laughs> I almost fell over in shock. I don't know where in the world, but this is the perception Americans are getting. Everything's going okay, but people are talking already. If you listen carefully, they're not keeping it quiet. People are already, there's alerts, 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 red lights, or little, little red lights are going on. The big one hasn't gone off yet, but the little ones are everywhere. It's already becoming uncomfortable for a lot of people, and some people already lost their life savings, but we still have a little time. Now, does David Gates have the answers? No. Does, who, does, who has the answers? God has the answers. And last day event says, if we ask him, God will tell us when and how to sell our things. But if we don't ask him, he will not tell us. We will be allowed to keep our things until it's too late, and then they will come down like a mountain to crush us. That's, that's, that's a quote. Maybe not exact word for word, but that's the quote. If we don't ask him, he won't tell us. Isn't it? I'm a little shocked that God will not tell us, but he wants to be asked. Because he's already said, if we ask him, he will tell us. Don't you think we ought to start asking you came forward today and said, Lord, you own everything I have. Don't you think you need to go back to him and say, dear owner, please tell me as, a, as, as your manager what to do with your things. Don't you think we need to start asking? Now, if you want to sell your house, like some, I have two dentists right now that are pilots. They're planning on coming down with their families to work with me in Bolivia full time. For a whole year, they have tried to sell their practices and their house, and they can't. Not everybody can sell their house anymore. In fact, only if you have a very, very expensive house where people want your house regardless of how much it costs, those kind of people in that kind of bracket, they, they buy whatever they want. But if it's just a regular house, medium, average home, the chances are it's too late to sell. However, let God deal with it. That's his problem. God always takes us right where we're at. Now, I, that's not the main focus of my meeting today, but does it give you a sense of, of what is about to happen? Since Americans are not talking about it, at least nobody is officially talking about it, because what would happen if the, what would happen if the federal government made a prediction that in six months it would crash? It would crash right now. <laughs> so why talk about it? I almost agree with them. It's too late to talk about it. They should have talked about it 30 years ago. But now it's too late, because if they even talk about it officially... But here are some symptoms. Did you know that from March last month, the United States government is no longer predicting is no longer publishing economic forecasts or indicators, I'm sorry. Do you know that always the U.S. government had quarterly economic indicators? Well, the indicators are that the economy will grow by only 2%. The, the economy is going to grow by 5%. Or that or it's, we're going to have a booming economy, whatever it is they predict. They quit doing it in March. Why? Because no matter what they predict, it's horrible. So just close the department. They closed it, they said, for lack of budget. They can, they can print enough money to give every person 
$300. But they can't keep people on salary, a few people in the government, to forecast things because the news is too bad. Why publish anything if it's bad? Just keep your mouth shut. So th these are indicators that are of the condition that we're, that, that, that's happening. Now, now let's get to the spiritual part. The reason I mentioned it, and I hope you don't feel like this is pulled out of the blue. If you do, it doesn't matter. It's still the truth. Whatever our feelings are, we're right on the very final verge of collapse. And most people will be caught hungry with totally unprepared. And people in Europe, Chavez, you, Chavez doesn't like President Bush, does he? Huh? He doesn't seem to mind Americans, but he certainly doesn't like our government. Now, I live in Venezuela, at least for a little bit longer. I don't know how much longer I can live there. Things are getting hotter and hotter. Um, the, the vision just recommended that maybe I relocate to one of the Dutch islands. But I haven't made that move yet. We're just, the union is working out the arrangements, if that's the case. That doesn't mean I can't come and go, but to live in Venezuela is getting more and more painful for Americans. But Chavez is saying the exact same thing. And he's not making it up. He's saying, all we have to do is hang on a little longer. America is right going to crash in a few months. Did he make it up? No. What's Europe saying? America is going to crash in the next few months. Let's decouple. Let's decouple. Everybody who has assets in America, get rid of your assets in America. If you have paper money, get rid of them. I was in Bolivia three weeks ago. I went to the airport. I had to pay my departure fee for the airplane. So I took out a $20 bill, which I normally pay. I've done it for years. I took out a $20 bill. Oh, well, come on. I'm looking for 20s. Well, here's two tens. I took out two tens, and I, and I laid them on the desk. He said, I'm sorry. We don't take these anymore. I said, what do you mean you don't take them anymore? No. We're not allowed in government anymore to accept U.S. dollars. Well, what do I do? Well, go down to the money changers. Okay. I jumped on a motorcycle. There's little taxi motorcycles everywhere. I jumped on one, went down to the riverfront, and I said, there's 10 guys with stacks of money on all the tables, dealing in Bolivian currency, Brazilian currency, U.S. currency, euros. And I said, I need to change $20, please. Sorry, we don't take it. What, you don't have the money? No, we're just not taking U.S. anymore. Go to the other guy down there. Okay. Uh, I need to change $20, please. Sorry, we don't take it. Does anybody of you take U.S. dollars? No. We don't want to get caught dead with that money. Man, I started getting scared. All my life I've grown up and this has been good currency. Not even the money changers will touch it because they're afraid they'll get caught with it when it crashes tomorrow. Now, finally one of the guys said, hey, excuse me, aren't you, the, aren't you that guy on television that's always giving messages on the family and other things? I said, yeah. Oh, I love your sermons. He said, I'm a pastor of the Baptist church. I love your sermon. Give me your $20. I'll do you the favor. Took my money and sh -sh -sh gave me it. And I went and paid my bill. Now, think of this. A poor little country like Bolivia, the government won't take it, and the money changers won't take it. How long is that currency going to be good? That is the first time in my life that I can't even get rid of the money. Fortunately, one person did, it, did me a favor. Now, Let's get to the spiritual side of it. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying. What do they call it when you push something a lot? You have a horse or what do you call it? Huh? Hobby horse? Yeah. I'm just sharing information with you. I want to get on to the spiritual side. But of course, this has a big implication for you. I hope you can reason yourself through. When that happens, you're not going to grocery store to eat, are you? You, you better have some seeds you can plant and you better have seeds that can be planted over and over again. Don't get some of those hybrids. You'll get one bumper crop, and that's all you can get. You can't go buy any more seeds. So try to buy seeds whose seeds of the vegetables can be set, planted again. Right? Think. Think. They call, heirlooms. they call them heirlooms? Get heirloom seeds and have plenty of them to plant and start growing now because you're not going to harvest it the day after the bank closes.